Hello and welcome to this week's Lab at Home vlog. This week is a continuation um, slightly of last week's video blog because I am still troubleshooting the pigeon sexing workflow. Um, in last week, if you remember, I used the Proteinase K kit to extract DNA from 20 feathers that a pigeon breeder had kindly sent to us to get this workflow working. And then I was tweaking the PCR program to get good enough amplification to be able to uh, sex those birds. Um, I did note in my uh, sort of explanation of the results, however, that there were certain PCRs that didn't work. I got no bands and I was struggling to sort of understand and explain why that had happened. Uh, I noticed that when I looked back through my lab book, and this is why it's really good to take good notes, that the PCRs that I set up in the morning worked and then those that I set up in the afternoon didn't. And I can show you an example of that here in my lab book. Um, so that top gel I set up in the morning and then come the afternoon I used exactly the same samples, same master mix. All I did was add an extra five cycles to the PTR program and I got no bands whatsoever which is the complete like, opposite of what I expected to happen. I thought they were going to be stronger and more bands. And this happened um, a couple of times last week. So I was racking my brain as to what changed between the morning and the afternoon PCRs. And all that I could think of was that in the morning, I'd just taken my DNAs out of the freezer and they were still partially frozen. So I was just pipetting liquid off the top of those DNA extractions and putting it into my PCR master mix. Whereas by the afternoon, um, the DNA extractions had completely thawed and I was vortexing them to uh, pipette them into the master mix. Um, and then in the Proteinase K kit, if you remember, there's a big bottle about this size with the magnetic stirrer at the bottom. And I give that a really good shake to mix in the resin that settles in a cloud at the bottom. So my theory was that in my DNA extractions, there was a resin cloud. And therefore, in the morning, when I just pipette off the top, there I'm not taking up the resin. Whereas in the afternoon, I vortex it, I'm mixing in the resin, and then that's acting as a PCR inhibitor for my PCRs. So that is what I'm going to be testing today. Uh, I have uh, defrosted a sample from the um, uh, one of the pigeon DNA extractions, number 14, which uh, last week I showed to be a female, came up with two lovely bands on the gel. Um, and there you can see, I hope this will focus on my camera, but you can see a little bit of a, what I'm going to call a resin cloud at the bottom of that DNA extraction there. And I also have um, defrosted the one in 10 dilution that I prepared at the same time as finishing those extractions. Uh, it's less evident, but there is actually still a little bit of resin cloud there. So what I want to do is to figure out what is actually causing that PCR inhibition, um, whether it is that resin that I've hypothesized, and if there's anything that I can do to um, prevent that from happening, so that when we make this workflow available to you, you know how to set up a PCR without experiencing any inhibition. So you'll be one step ahead of where I was last week. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've uh, prepared these PCR tubes here. They've each got the PCR master mix in that I was using last week. So that contains the standard fire pole master mix. And then these three primers here, which are P0, P2 and P8. And those are the primers that we use for the pigeon sexing workflow. In the first um, one, I'm going to very carefully pipette just from the very top of that concentrated um, DNA extraction. So that's the one taken directly from the proteinase um, K kit. So I'm going to try and do this 
very hard to do with my big fingers and these tiny little tubes whoa steady hands so i'm gonna take off the top four microliters of that liquid without causing any mixing um, or disturbing that resin cloud at the bottom and i'm going to pipette that into my master mix And tap that down. Now that is ready to go on the heat block. Uh, for the next one, I'm going to use the dipstick from our dipstick extraction kit. So the idea of the dipstick is that you can um, dip it into um, a tube full of loose floating DNA. And the DNA will bind to that white tip of the stick. So let's uh, do this as I'm talking. So I'm going to dip that dipstick into the DNA extraction three times. There we go. I have one for luck. <laughs> and then you dip it into the wash buffer, which I showed you here dipstick wash buffer and the idea is that that wash buffer should clean off any impurities or potential PCR inhibitors so you dip that in five times there we go and then hopefully right now the DNA from my extraction is attached to that white tip of the stick and I'm going to dunk that hoo -hoo. there we go don't do things on camera because you make mistakes like that <laughs> this is the PCR master mix and I'm going to dunk, dunk it straight into that PCR master mix there. So let's just, oh, I hope you can see this. I'm just dipping it straight into that green PCR mix there. So hopefully that has now deposited the DNA without those PCR inhibitors in there. Next up... I'm going to do essentially the same again. However, I'm going to add an extra step where I wash, um, or elute is the proper word. I elute the DNA from the dipstick into PCR grade water. So that's my PCR grade water. And then I'm going to um, mix that thoroughly and take my DNA sample from there for the PCR. This is the thing with um, molecular biology troubleshooting. It's a little bit of trying different things and seeing what works. Okay, so back to my um, original DNA extraction here. Same again, just dip that dipstick into the liquid one, two, three times. Do a little wash around, hopefully it's picking up some DNA. Then I'm going to dunk that dipstick in the wash buffer again to get rid of any um, impurities and inhibitors. And now this time, instead of putting it straight into the master mix, I'm just going to, there we go, try and sort of wipe it off in the water and it's broken off so let's just wash it ah, there we go good so hopefully that's deposited dna into that clear water now i'm going to mix that with my pipette take up four microliters again and use that as my DNA sample. Yeah, put that in the master mix there. Okay. Put that on the PCR heat block. And then finally, I'm now going to mix that sample up. So 
I don't think it's, oh yeah it has actually mixed quite nicely by flicking it back and forth you can also give it a flick and then the final mixing step would be to um, mix it with my pipette tip when it's there so now uh, if you were able to see that cloud at the bottom previously you should now be able to hopefully see that it's all disintegrated which means that that resin cloud is now uh, mixed up in the sample so I'm now going to um, take uh, so a bit more mixing of that sample and then I'm going to take four microliters of that mixed version and put that into the master mix so essentially if I'm my hypothesis is correct my first <coughs> sample should work, which is the taken from the top because it shouldn't contain the uh, resin. Whereas this um, sample shouldn't amplify because it now contains the resin. Uh, and I hang fire on what is going to happen with the dipstick because I'm very curious to know that. So I'm going to do exactly the same now with the 1 in 10 dilution. Um, into these four PCR tubes. I've already prepared a control. And I'll pop that in there. And then I'll show you um, the PCR. Here I have the eight samples plus the control ready to go on the PCR. 14 is the um, concentrated DNA extraction from the proteinase K kit. And 14.1 is the one in 10 dilution of that extraction into water. So I've set the PCR program up that is the one that was found to work the best for the pigeon sexing. So that's the 38 cycle, sorry, the 30 cycles at 48 degrees C annealing temperature. And I'm gonna set that running and see what happens. Not the brightest gel, I have to say, but it does answer the question that I was asking in this vlog. So I'm going to talk you through it and explain how it answers my question. So these samples here uh, with T are from the top of the DNA extractions. So those are the ones that I just pipetted off the top without mixing the sample or disturbing the resin cloud at all. Uh, there's a stronger band in the concentrated sample, which is 14, and a weaker band in the 1 in 10 dilution, which is 14.1, which is what I saw in the original uh, gel that I ran um, for this PCR. And you can see the double bands, which indicates it's a female. Then the samples D are the dipstick, where I put the dipstick into the, the DNA extraction then into the wash buffer and then put the dipstick straight into the PCR master mix. And you can see that it has worked with transferring the DNA, but um, they are weaker bands than in the top samples. DW refers to dipstick water. So I added the extra step of um, placing the dipstick into um, PCR grade water. And then I used that uh, water as the DNA sample. It was worth a go, but it hasn't worked. There's no bands there. And then interestingly, M is for my mixed samples. So that's when I um, mixed up the DNA extractions and uh, basically dispersed the resin cloud into the DNA extractions and then uh, took a mixed sample. And that hasn't worked at all. So that confirms my hypothesis that um, the reason my morning PCRs were working and my afternoon PCRs were not working was because of the mixing of the samples and the inhibition caused by that resin cloud at the bottom. So this is um, good because going forward in the protocols, I will recommend that if you have done DNA extractions using the proteinase K kit, which involves that resin, that you do not mix or vortex your DNA extractions before you take a sample for the PCR, and that you just pipette your four microliters carefully off the top, um, and there shouldn't be any inhibition. So that's a nice um, beginning to end question answering. Thank you for watching.